We'll go ahead and do a second take on this video now that I'm getting warmed up. The engines are getting <laughs> getting a little bit hot now. So, uh, and I was going to do a video last night, but Windows did an update on, on the computer, which took, it was protracted. Thought it was never going to finish up. About, took about 90 minutes, I think, maybe over 90 minutes. And so I'm going to try to catch up a little bit tonight. So let's get on with it. Nice to, nice to come across this Lost 45 by Debbie Gibson, number 31, up 9 from 40. On this fancy playlist, July 30th, 1989. No more Ryan Boy. She has a beautiful voice on this video. In some ways, I kind of appreciate Debbie Gibson a lot more now than I did back then. I, of course, she had a backlash because she was... It, it, her, her, the, the genre was sort of bubblegum dance pop, and she was so huge for a couple of years and sort of faded out by about 1990, 1991, although it is worth mentioning, the last real big hit I remember she had was Anything Is Possible. That song was co-written with Lamont Dozier of Holland, Dozier, Holland. Big prime songwriters, prime cut songwriters of Motown back in the mid 60s. And she co wrote the Anything Is Possible, but that song went to number 26. And I, I, I have to admit, I did give Debbie Gibson a hard time a little bit. I, but boy, she, she's got an amazing voice, particularly listening to this record. Hadn't listened to it in 30 years, listened to it several times on YouTube. I, I did like her first song, Only in My Dreams. Just a lot of bounce to the ounce to record up tempo and a shake your love back in the fall of 1987. Remember watching that video on Night Trace? It was the same time when U2 came out with uh, Where the Streets Have No Name. Remember the iconic video where the group was singing on, on the uh, skyscraper in and, and, uh, Los Angeles. Oh my goodness, I can't remember. 32 freaking years ago. But I'm getting off topic. Let's get back to Debbie Gibson. Very talented woman. She had to grow up fast. She, as a, she, I forgot how old she was, eight, nine, ten years old. She sang children's chorus. She sang in a children's chorus at the Metropolitan Opera House in New York City. Got a deal later on with Atlantic Records. She wrote the, she wrote all the ten songs on her first album. Although she did have some help from several producers, including one fellow named Evan Sarr, C-A-R-R, C, -A -R -R. C like the last letter of the alphabet. And uh, that album went platinum about two times, two times platinum. Electric Youth came after that. That went three times platinum. And this record um, at number 31, No More Rhyme, came off of that album, Electric Youth. Keep in mind, now, oh boy, Debbie Gibson, she was in high school at the peak of her popularity. 1987, 88, going into the spring, summer of 1989. And, uh, well, the record company wanted her to perform. They had her out on the road when she was in high school. She had to do about, she was out on the road doing about, uh, about three or four nights a week of shows and flew back to class the next morning. Not homeschooled either, I don't think, Debbie Gibson. And it caught up with her. She started having panic attacks and she had to take Xanax. Fortunately though, she didn't drift off into hard drugs and alcohol, so that was good. Last song I remember that by Debbie Gibson. I remember watching this on a video. You're not gonna believe this. Sears Roebuck. Sears Roebuck. I can't pronounce the word Roebuck. Here in Tuscaloosa, it's, it closed down recently. But back in 1993, they had a TV in Sears that ran videos. And I remember watching the, the last video. I remember by Debbie Gibson was Shock Your Mama. And they played that video on that video channel they're running at Sears or something. And uh, that song and that feat, well, the song was writ was co-written and produced by Carl Strunken. I can't, I think I pronounced his last name correctly, and Evan Rogers. Those two guys, you might remember the group Rhythm Syndicate. They had that hit Passion back in 1991, but they, these two guys did some major production too. They, they resuscitated Donny Osmond. They co-wrote, well, they wrote and they produced 
his comeback hits in 89 and 90. Well, 1989, Sacred Emotion and Soldier of Love. And later, Evan Rogers discovered Rihanna. And they co-produced Strunken, I hope I pronounced that guy's last name correctly, and Rogers, they produced a first hit record, Ponda Replay, Rihanna, back in 2004, 2005. So Debbie Gibson, but she's, she's hanging out in elite company back in the day. After, when her popularity as a pop star, per se, started to dissipate, she was still performing. She was acting in musicals. She played the character, wrote it down. This is pretty impressive. She played Sandy in the West End production of Grease. She played the character of Belle in Beauty and the Beast. Debbie Gibson. Got to read you a quote from Debbie Gibson that really resonated. And if you've got writing blocks, if you've got writing issues, this might be very helpful. This really, this was really cool. Let me sit I'm trying to dig it up right now. She was talking about when she wrote the song Electric Youth, one of her biggest hits. And the song just came to her. Her reception, her antenna was just wide open, just received it. And this is a quote from Debbie Gibson, quote, If you and your thinking get out of the way, the universe provides what is supposed to be, and it comes on through. I want Debbie Gibson to be my writing teacher. <laughs> yes. Quote, unquote. Yes, that is lovely. Debbie Gibson, if you're watching this video, I love it. It's, it's beautiful. This is from an interview she did about five years ago. All right, here we go. Debbie Gibson, number 31. No More Rhyme on my fancy playlist. Did I mention the chart position of No More Rhyme? I don't think I did. Went to number 17. Not not really one of her biggest hits, but still a lovely record. Got a great voice on this record. Debbie Gibson's No More Rhyme at number 31 on my fancy playlist, July 30th, 1989.